Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA. Today we're going to cover pulmonary oxygen toxicity. Now, listen, there are a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings about hyperbaric oxygen as a, as a whole. And one of the things that comes up a lot is oxygen toxicity and oxygen not being safe. So there are two different kinds of oxygen toxicity, central nervous system oxygen toxicity and pulmonary oxygen toxicity. They're both important. I'm going to cover each one in separate videos because I really want each one to be understood very well. The other thing I really want to be understood very well is that hyperbaric oxygen as a therapeutic tool is extraordinarily safe. And I'm going to use uh, some examples to, to, to show you that yes, pulmonary oxygen toxicity is absolutely real. It is a thing. However, when hyperbaric oxygen is delivered properly as a therapy and the technicians and doctors in charge understand these variables, you will see that pulmonary oxygen toxicity should be virtually almost impossible to reach. And I will show you the numbers to prove that. So let's, let's cover pulmonary oxygen toxicity uh, for the next few minutes. Uh, Dr. Wright, sometime, it was like 1968, 1970, uh, he was seeing that patients have uh, lung tissue damage from being on 100% pure oxygen for too long of a period of time. Now, this wasn't even including hyperbaric oxygen necessarily. This was just including patients with certain lung conditions who were on, you know, a mask hooked up to medical grade, you know, 100% green tank oxygen. And so what we saw was patients that were hooked up for 24 hours a day had pretty significant signs or early stage signs of lung tissue damage. And so what he did was he came up with a patient, uh, like a dose for oxygen uh, based on these numbers. So a patient who is on oxygen for 24 hours a day, they got a certain dose of oxygen and we needed to use that concept and those numbers to figure out how to safely administer oxygen to these patients. Uh, how many, how often do they need to take breaks? Things like that. And, and then we applied that to the hyperbaric oxygen world. So, the way he discovered, or the way he came up with his equation was more or less uh, one minute equaled one pulmonary toxicity dose, okay? So every minute that you're hooked up to 100% oxygen is considered one unit dose, one UPTD, okay? And so if you were hooked up to 100% or, or oxygen at sea level, regular atmospheric pressure with a mask of oxygen, you would take in 1,440 units of pulmonary toxicity dosage. That's basically how many minutes there are in a day. So 24 hours a day, 1,440 units. And at that time, you're seeing tissue damage. And so what we want to do is we want to avoid reaching levels like that. Okay. Now, that being said, I want to show you some examples of hyperbaric oxygen, typical pressures, and typical time frames, so that you understand that yes, this is real. Pulmonary oxygen toxicity is absolutely a huge problem. However, applied properly, hyperbaric therapy should never even come close to numbers like 1440. And so here are just a few quick examples, just so you could start to wrap your head around it. If we were at 15 feet of seawater, which is the equivalent of about 15 feet uh, or 1.5 atmospheres. So 1.5 atmospheres equals 15 feet of seawater. And we were there for an hour, we would have a UPTD of 105. And so you could very safely do two hour therapy sessions if you wanted to, you'd be at 210, you know? So at 15 feet of seawater, one and a half atmospheres for an hour, your UPTD is 105 virtually no risk of pulmonary oxygen toxicity at all. If you were at 30 feet of seawater, so twice as deep, which is equivalent to 1.9 atmospheres of pressure at 100% oxygen, you would have a UPTD of 142, still nowhere near. If you went twice as deep yet to 60 feet of seawater, 60 feet of seawater is 2.8 
ATA. And at 2.8 ATA, you would be at a UPTD of 214. Again, even a two hour session at 2.8, you would not be at any risk of pulmonary oxygen toxicity. And so what I want you to understand is oxygen toxicity is real. Pulmonary oxygen toxicity is a big deal and we need to avoid it. However, with a very wide range of pressures and at different depths at 100% oxygen for an hour or two, we are still not even halfway up to the uh, total UPTD that we need to avoid. And keep this in mind, sequential visits does make a difference. However, if you did 24 hours between each session, your clock would literally reset. And so if you did 100 in a particular day and you had to do 100 more eight hours later, that would also be fine. You would still be at 210 and you still had 1440 to, you know, as a total. But if you put four, uh, 24 hours in between sessions, your pulmonary oxygen toxicity clock, so to speak, completely resets. And therefore, uh, you would be starting at zero again, getting another 100 or, or 200 for that particular day. I hope that clarifies. I'm not giving you the full equation. There is a full equation. You could look it up. Um, but this basically lays out the math for how to calculate pulmonary oxygen toxicity and just to illustrate the fact that under normal hyperbaric conditions, by the way, these are pretty high pressures. You know, in, in even in a, a lot of hospital settings, you know, 2.8 is a lot. I think most are, are going to like 2.4, 2.5 at most. In other clinics that are doing more like functional medicine, regenerative medicine, really two atmospheres is the most people are doing on any regular basis. And a lot of treatment is, doing, is being done at 1.3 atmospheres or 1.5 atmospheres. And as you can see, obviously, the less pressure we're using, uh, the less UPDDs we're accumulating over that time. And so, again, myths and misconceptions. And I want you to be able to have a logical conversation, especially if, you know, one of your other uh, either colleagues and or a doctor in your life is telling you that hyperbaric oxygen is dangerous and pulmonary oxygen toxicity needs to be dealt with, that you understand that it does need to be dealt with. However, it is extraordinarily safe and we're nowhere near the numbers that would be required for pulmonary oxygen toxicity or lung tissue damage in any way. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time.